Hi, I'm Jake Hicks, and thanks for joining us on our Team Bowen's lighting tutorial. Today we're going to be going through building a creative portrait step by step and showing you that each and every step creates an outstanding image, but towards the end we'll also be adding in some more creative elements using gels and lens filters to really give that portrait an overall edge. So today we're going to be using four Gemini 400RX heads and on our key light we've got a 21 inch silver beauty dish and that has a white diffusion sock on it as well. The beauty dish is positioned directly above the model's head. We're using the high glide system as well, which means that I can get directly underneath it without any light stand being in the way, which is going to be a big help and perfect for beauty lighting. The second light we're using in this setup is going to be the Lumiere 60x80 softbox, and that's on a 400 head again, and that's on the floor stand positioned just in front of the model's feet there. I haven't angled it directly up at the model's face. I've angled it more towards the torso just to feather the light so you get a really nice, clean, even light underneath the jawline and underneath the eyebrows. Final two lights in this setup are directly behind the model pointed towards the back of her hair. At the moment, we've got very dark hair in the shot and against a black background, the model's going to get lost completely in that image. So these two hair lights are really going to help to make her stand off the background. At the moment, I've got two gels on there, but I will show you some shots with and without the gels just to show you the difference of how that looks and we're using two maxi light dish reflectors plus two grids, and those grids will really help us maintain the light directly onto the model. So once we've got all the lights in place and I've taken some shots with and without the colored gels, I'm gonna be adding some creative elements right at the end. And I'll be doing that by adding the addition of a lens filter onto the lens, which will add a diffused look, which will get a lot of colored flare into the shot. I'll also be bringing in a Lens Baby Composer Pro lens, which is gonna blur out the bottom half of the image, bringing all the attention, all the viewer's attention right up to the model's face. Also be using the jet stream as well, which will bring some movement into the hair with some wind. And again, that's gonna create a lot more action into the shot itself. So that's the plan. Let's take a closer look at each of the lights individually. The first light in our setup is gonna be the 21 inch silver beauty dish. This is gonna be our key light. Bowens does a white beauty dish as well. I prefer using the silver one just because it's gonna give me a bit more contrast overall, especially with the outfit that we've got here. We've got a lot of shiny, sparkly items and also the silver one is gonna give me a little bit of a cooler color temperature, which is something that I try and go for when using gels as well, so we're not fighting that. I've positioned it just above the model's head, angled down, uh, we're gonna get some nice big catch lights in the eyes, and because we're using the high glide system, it means that I can shoot directly underneath the beauty dish and get a really nice, clean, even lighting across the model's face. On the silver beauty dish, I am gonna add a diffusion sock. that's going to do is just going to soften up the overall lighting. I've got the silver dish underneath still, so it's still going to give me that contrast, but I just want to soften up some of the edge transitions on the shadows, especially noticeable underneath the jawline and underneath the eyebrows. Let's take a few shots of that and see how it looks. This is our first light in the setup, and this is our silver beauty dish. And we can see that it gives a very beautifying light with some nice sculpting shadows underneath the jawline and eyebrows, but without blowing out the highlights on the forehead and nose. So the second light in our setup is going to be our fill light. This is a Lumiere 60x80 softbox, positioned on the floor, angled slightly up towards the model. I'm just going to be adding a little bit of fill, a little bit of detail in some of the shadow areas, especially seeing as we're using a slightly more contrasty key light with our beauty dish. It just means that with that extra detail in the shadows, it means I've got a bit more information to work with when I start to play with the image in post-production. The angle of my fill light is actually positioned more towards the model's torso, not pointed directly at the model's face. The reason for that is because I want to feather the light as it reaches in some of the darker areas, especially underneath the jawline and underneath the eyebrows. By feathering the light like this, it means that that light is going to be as soft as possible. Let's take some shots of that and see how it looks. We've introduced our second light into the setup in the shot. 
And this is our fill light, this is our small softbox on the floor. And we can see that it's added a lot of detail back into the shadows, especially under the jawline and underneath the eyebrows. We can also see that it's brought some color and detail back into the clothing, the lower end of the image as well. The last two lights I'm going to add into this setup is going to be my two backlights or hair lights. They are predominantly just lighting the back of the model's hair and just to pick her out from the background. We've got some very dark hair here and we're shooting against a black background, so we need to separate the model from the background and bring her forward so that she stands out in the image. The two lights have two maxi light reflectors on plus two grids just to really concentrate the light exactly where we need it. I've just raised them up a little bit above her head as well just to get a bit of hair light on top of the head as well. Let's take some shots of that and see the difference. By introducing these last two lights in this setup, we've clearly picked the model out from the background. We can see now that the hair is being picked up by the lights behind her, and that she's really standing out. We can see that clearly on the arms, as well as the sides of the hair and on top of the head. Now that we've set up our four lights, we already have an outstanding portrait image perfectly lit. We've got some beautifying light coming in from our beauty dish as our key light. We're filling in some of those shadows with our fill softbox, and we're picking out our model from the background with our two hair lights at the back. It's now that we can get a bit more creative with our shots, and I like to do that by introducing some colors, and I'm gonna be doing it today via these color gels. It's a good idea when you're using colors, especially colored lighting, to stick to some basic color theory, and I'll be doing that with complementary colors. These are the colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, and I'll be using orange and blue gels today. Let's put those on the lights and see how it looks. Up until this point, the images had a very muted color palette. So what I've done is I've introduced some color gels on the back hair lights. I have orange on one side and blue on the other. What this does is it means that the image is far more eye-catching overall. So the first step we've taken to making this portrait a little bit more creative was adding that color. But at the moment, I still feel that the top of this image is quite empty and, especially, and it's very dark as well. So what I want to do is I want to introduce something a bit more eye-catching up there. I'm going to do that by adding some colored flare. I don't need to change the power of the lights, I don't need to move them around. All I need to do is just add a filter to the front of my lens, and this is called a diffusion filter. What it does is it diffuses the light as it comes into the lens and diffracts it into this lens flare that we're going to see in a second. All that diffusion filter is doing is diffracting the light as it comes in, creating this really colorful lens flare in the top hand corners where it's previously quite dark. Now that we've taken care of those darker elements at the top of the frame with that colored flare, I just want to make sure that the viewer's attention is brought directly to the model's eyes. And I'm going to do that by blurring out the bottom end of the image. To do so, I'm going to use a specialist lens called the Lens Baby Composer Pro. What that's going to do is it's going to blur out the bottom so that the viewer's eyes can look nowhere but at the model's face. The final element I'm going to bring in is the jet stream. It's going to add a little bit of wind into the shot and going to blow the model's hair and just going to give the image a lot more action in terms of look overall. So let's put everything together now and take this one final shot and see how that looks. In this final step in the process, I've introduced the lens baby, which is blurring the bottom half of the frame. This forces the viewer's attention all the way to the model's face and is not distracted by the bottom half anymore. I also introduced the jet stream, which is blowing the model's hair, which is giving a lot more of an engaging look and a lot of sense of action in the shot. We started off by creating some really clean, crisp portrait lighting, but by adding these creative elements towards the end with the introduction of colored gels, the wind machine, and the lens flare, we've really now made a really engaging portrait that really stands out and will catch any viewer's attention. So that was our how to build a creative portrait step by step with the addition of creative elements right at the end there as well. There's loads of different things that you can try yourselves at home, like trying out different color combinations with colored gels. Different looks with that is gonna give you different moods and feels to the image overall, so play around with those. And also check out some of the different lens filters that you can apply in this situation as well. Again, that's gonna give you a really different look each and every time. 
Thanks so much indeed again for watching guys and don't forget to check back with Team Bowens for more inspirational lighting tutorials. See you next time.